Okay folks, welcome back to the lab. As you can see, we've got our little power supply project all set up here. I've got the, the new LCD meter on it. And you can see we're outputting 25 volts at 0.49 amps and approximately 12.2 watts is being generated. We've got our 20 volt transformer hooked up. We have our new heat sink is now put into use. And let's see, what else did I change? Yes, so I, I changed this uh, Zener diode from a 5.1 to a 3.9, just to give us a little bit more leeway on the operational amplifiers. I'll show you what we have now across them. I changed this resistor here, this is R12. I changed this from a 56K to 41K. And uh, that should bring the gain of this section down such that uh, the maximum is around about 25 volts. And the maximum we can get out of it um, is about 25.3 volts. And uh, we're not without issues though. So that, you know, even though I've made those changes, we're not without issues. Now, right now what I'm doing here is you can see with the, the current limiting, I have the, cur the current limiting resistor is lifted up. I need to change that a little bit. And let me show you why. So if I, if I take the resistor box out of the circuit here, uh, then what happens is this thing should start to current limit at two and a half amps. Now let me bring up the load to two and a half amps. We've got the load up here at two and a half amps. Um, but this this doesn't start to current limit right away. I mean it should be it should be just beginning to current limit at the maximum if we want to make this a 2.5 amp power supply. But it doesn't. You have to come down about more than halfway before it starts to current limit. So what I did is I set up this uh, resistor here, I put that in. I'm not sure what the value is yet, but I played around with it for a little bit. And now it, it starts the current limit just there. So that's what we want. Well, number one, our voltage has dropped way down. Our voltage dropped down to 21.8 with uh, 2.1 amps on it. We bring it up to 2.5 amps. Our voltage drops down to basically 21 volts and if I could show you my scope because I don't have enough room here to put the scope up on the screen but we've got about four volts peak to peak of a triangular wave ripple there it's just ridiculous now mind you if I back that down so right there it's gone away uh, and we're at 25 volts but we're only down 0.49 amps that doesn't please me at all I mean I want this thing to to have an operating range uh, where it, everything works, everything is with you know we don't get a major ripple, we don't get any overheating and and, and other things like that. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it back. I want I wanted to make it a two and a half amp, 25 volt power supply, but I'm going to cut that back to 20 volts. And I'm also going to do something about this capacitor. Now in my experimenting around, I found I had I have this 35 volt Nichicon here. It's the same value as this, uh, but I'm putting this across this gets rid of most of the ripple if I restrict the power supply to 20 volts. This particular capacitor gets warm. Uh, there's, there's something going on. It's, it's a piece of junk. This gets actually gets quite hot. I'm going to change that out and put the Nichicon in. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to measure this resistor and put that value in this place. Now I, I'm pretty sure I don't have that exact value. First of all, let's bring this down to 20 volts and we'll make some of our measurements there. All right, now I'm going to bring it back up to two and a half amps. We've dropped down to 19.8 volts. We've got about one volt peak to peak on the ripple. So if I connect this up here, let me turn off the power momentarily. In case I don't do anything really silly. Connect this, this capacitor up across there. Okay, let's turn that back on again. So now we're back up to 20 volts and the ripple is reduced to 330 millivolts. That's a heck of a lot better. Yeah, so the RMS value is about 130 millivolts. I have to figure out what the value of this should be in order to get 20 volts. So I've got to do some math on that. Now this is just a non-inverting amplifier here. So I want to reduce the gain to approximately two because we've got a 10 volt, uh, 10 volts coming in to pin three of U2. Let's look at the voltage across the uh, op amps now. This is with uh, a fairly decent load on it at 28 volts, so that's absolutely fine. Now, if we drop the, the load down at 100 milliamps, 
and it's 33 volts. So that's that's fine. These are these are good for 36 volts. So we've got that problem is solved. Our negative voltage is instead of 5.1, we've got 3.7. Yeah, so everything's pretty good. Everything's pretty good at this level. So I want to I just want to change the resistance of R12 so that we we can get this thing as a, a 0 to 20 volts and 0 to 2.5 amps. Why don't I do that? In the meantime, I'll also change out this for the Nichicon. Before we go though, I want to measure this resistance. I'm going to try and make up a composite resistor of approximately that value. We we'll have to take this off here. I'm going to shut off the power and measure the resistance. I got 79.1K. So I'm going to have to put a couple of resistors together to get that, but that's okay. This meter's looking pretty nice, eh? Okay, so let me show you what I've done here. R12 here, I put down a 27K. It's because if you look here on the schematic, R11 is 27K. So with this being 27K, this being 27K, the uh, gain would be 1 plus 27 over 27K. So the gain would be 2. That would give us approximately our 20 volts. I hope we'll be close enough here. I needed to use two resistors here. I don't know if you can see that. There's two resistors I stacked up here. It gives us me about 80 K ohms for the current limit. I put an Ichikon in here and I put another one on the back. It's held down with some double sided sticky tape. I'll probably put a little bit of uh, hot snot in here when I do the final assembly. I think that's about it. I already told you that I'd put a 3.9 Zener in instead of the 5.1. And what else did I do? Oh yeah, these are these are 741s. I I'm, don't have TL081s in here. The 741s work fine. Yeah, we've got a, our voltage on the, the op amps is perfect now. And now this just remains uh, to hook all this back up and test it to see if we come reasonably close to my dream of having a power supply that works over its range. And now its range is 0 to 20 volts and 0 to 2 and a half amps without any serious ripple, without any overheating of components. That'll be 50 watts uh, at maximum. Um, maybe a little bit more than that will be passed through the transistor if you have a very low voltage and full two and a half amps. But it's not gonna be a heck of a lot more than that, maybe about 55 or 60 watts, which is well within the limits for this transistor. And this heat sink should be able to handle that with no problem at all with this little fan. So anyway, let's, let's uh, hook all this up and uh, see what we got now. And I think I'm just gonna draw the line here whether we got what we want or not because I think this is going on too long. This is supposed to be a, a cheap power supply and it's now turned into, it's still inexpensive, but it's turned into a huge project rather than a little project. I don't think we're gonna get anything perfect out of it, but let me hook it up and we'll come back. We'll test it out a little bit. Well, that's stuff around here. I think we can probably move things around a little bit to get a bit of the scope up here. Okay, we should have it up here now. Okay, so uh, we have have all our modifications have been made and uh, we have it all hooked up. And I haven't put the fine controls on there. I'm gonna leave that into the final assembly. Yeah, so we have here, the, the load is set up to a maximum of one amp and we have one amp going through here. We have 4.8 volts. Let's bring that up to the highest voltage we can go to. And getting 20.1, you can see here in the scope that we have no ripple yet. And we're 20 watts, that's good. Oh, I like this little display, this is nice. And our transistor here is it's not getting hot, it's warm. Just warm to the touch. This transistor is refrigerator. The regulator for the fan is doing fine. It's also powering this, but this, this takes about 10 milliamps. Um, our diodes here, they're going to get warm. No, they're, not, they're not scalding hot. This is not too bad. The Zener diode is fine. Let's, uh, let's just check the voltages here first on our op amps. We'll check on the voltage error amp first. 30 volts, that's fine. On the current error amp. 30 volts, that's fine. On the reference, 26 volts, everything's fine there. 
Let's uh, bring it up a little bit. Okay, does the uh, current limiting work? We're at maximum right now. Let's bring it down. I expect it to go a little bit past halfway and come on. Yeah, it's doing exactly that. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's nice travel there. Okay, it's doing exactly what is expected of it. Now I just want to bring, I want to bring the voltage up, or I mean the current up, and see what happens to our voltage here. Let's bring it up, uh, let's bring it up to two amps. We're 20 volts, two amps, 40 watts. And you can see there we have, let me put measurement on here. We're having about a hundred millivolts of peak to peak ripple there, which is not too bad. So now let's see if we, um, let's bring this down here, which at maximum, it should just be a little bit and then it should come in. Yep, it's, so the range on this is beautiful now. Bring this all the way up to two and a half amps. All right, two and a half amps. We're still at 20 volts or maximum is 20 volts. And we've got, now we've got uh, the ripple there. You can see it peak to peak, it's about half a volt. So how much do we have to come off the maximum voltage to get rid of that? I would say, I would say less than half a volt, right? Makes sense. So we're down to 19 volts and it's pretty well gone down to 110 millivolts. Bring it up to 19.6. It's gone. 19.9, we're about 400 millivolts. So that's it. That's about the best I can do with this. Uh, the only thing would be to add maybe a bigger capacitor on here. Uh, maybe I'll do that in the final thing. I might find a way to put three of these Nishikons on here. And that should get rid of that little bit of ripple. I could just put them underneath because I'm going to have to stand this up enough to allow for the other one. So I can just put two of them together and then wire them up to the bottom of the board and stick them on with the double sided tape. I don't think there's anything else I have to do. Oh, let, let's bring it down to zero volts. Let's make sure we can get down to zero volts. Um, let me reduce the current right now, going into current limiting mode there before I can get the zero volts. Yeah, we can get, we can get the zero volts. We get the zero volts, we can get the zero current. Let's bring that down with the current knob here. Yeah, perfect. Despite that little bit of uh, ripple, which I think we can get rid of with a third capacitor. So ideal what you want is about 10,000 microfarads, not uh, 3,300 or 6,600. That's basically the what we're going to implement in the case in the next video that we do on this. I may want to bring in some other little doodads, like a, a, a larger diameter fan might be good. Uh, so I'll look around for that. If I can't get that, I won't. I'm not going to wait too long to get something like that. I'm not going to order in, you know, a resistor for this double one here everything else seems to be working just fine so i'll just leave that as it is it's it's absolutely perfect well that's about it so and you know as you as you probably already realize i've decided to have this as the meter um it doesn't come up too good in the camera because it's still got that film on it but if i put it at the right angle here to me it looks it looks really good and i know it's going to even look better without the film on it and the digits are a nice size, and I do like the fact that we have wattage as well, so that's nice. All right, folks, once we get in the case, we'll do these tests over again and make sure that we haven't tripped over anything. But as it is, it's working fine right now. So there were a few things we had to change, and I'll detail all of those things in that final video. And maybe I'll put it in a Word document and attach it to the video itself. And I think we can get rid of most, if not all of that, last little bit of ripple so that over its entire working range it's going to work nice it's going to be comfortable all the voltages and wattages and everything are being looked after as the king in Amadeus said there it is thank you very much for coming out for this video I hope you got something out of it and uh, we'll see you in the next video coming up which is going to be another module for our modular design platform working towards that project that I have in mind. And this is a pretty nice little module to make a very efficient use of a small microcontroller. So I'll see you for that one, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.